Fittipaldi completed the 55 laps at an average speed of 132 miles an hour. His victory gave the John Player Lotus team the Manufacturer's Prize and himself the individual world championship. The youngest ever winner of motor racing's highest honor, Emerson Fittipaldi had plenty to celebrate. The Lotus 72 would be the most important car for my life. 50 years ago, the Lotus 72 won the Formula One world title, driven by Emerson Fittipaldi. Half a century on, the eight remaining 72s are coming together to celebrate with Emerson at Lotus in Hethel, Norfolk. Lotus cars will use the event to reveal a Fittipaldi edition of the Avaya electric hypercar. It will be a very special party. Fittipaldi and his car, the Lotus John Player Special, have proved faster and more reliable than anything else on the track. What made the Lotus 72 very special was the concept of the car with calling to adapt to different track conditions. For 72 and 90, 73 season, the car was incredible. Now people ask me, what's your best race car? I drove many different race cars, say Lotus 72, and this iconic car now, everybody's love, it's still beautiful today. One of the best liveries I think ever is, is the JPS livery. So yeah, it, it looks wonderful. It looks like a toy car, doesn't it? When you compare it to an F1 car now, massive rear wing, little front wing, no floor, no diffuser. You know, this has got a manual gearbox. It's got three pedals on the floor, no power steering. It's all very, very mechanical. The Type 72 was, at the time, was pretty revolutionary. Pretty incredible design, a break from everything they'd done before, pretty much. Moving the radiators to the side was a big thing, the chisel nose. And it just looks like a racing car. It just, the, the style, the aerodynamics were incredible. It was obviously much faster, provided speed, but it looked cool as well. Emerson and Lotus go hand in hand. Um, the 72 obviously has been a, a, a big part of his Formula One career. We're very fortunate that he shares the same passion that we do in remembering um, all these great cars and remembering his championship. The Lotus 72 changed Formula One. It also raced for six consecutive seasons, which is extraordinary. It won three world championships and really cemented Lotus's reputation as the great innovators and dominated Formula One for so long. The car has about one kilo per horsepower. That's the same power ratio as a modern Formula One car now. People don't realize that. It's difficult for me to give any tip for a world champion. <laughs> he knows what has to be done when you be in the cockpit. Oh, he's such a lovely man, isn't he? What you take from Emerson in, in that is that he is still massively passionate about the car, which is great. It was 50 years ago, but he still remembers it. Well, Emma was right. It's, uh, it isn't the biggest inside, but it's lovely to get into a bit of racing history and drive around. Yeah, the mechanical gearbox, everything's just nicely placed. You know, for, for heel and towing, the brake is lovely as well. A uh, very, very cool experience. Guys that were racing in the 70s, it was a very different sport than it is now. You know, you're sat properly outside the car, there's not a lot of protection, you've got a fuel tank all around you. So yeah, I mean, the guys were very brave back then. It's definitely a, a nice feeling stepping back in time, but it's also a little bit scary. I mean, it's so special 
when I look at all this eight low to 72 that was designed and built by the genius of Colin Chapman. It was so well advanced car. And now with this beautiful, this is a piece of art. I mean, looking outside, look at all the technology, looking everything, how many hours, how many effort to arrive in this car is a fantastic. Very special day for me to be back at Lotus to commemorate my 50 years of my first world championship. Now that uh, Lotus are, are launching the Fittipaldia via, 50 years on since Emerson won, that's, that, you know, that's another major innovative step for Lotus. It's not a racing car, but it's the first hypercar. It's an incredible piece of equipment. Um, the fact that the first ones are going to be fit to Paul D, uh, advise, is, is great for, for what we're doing, um, celebrating his championship. Um, but as with the 72, the Avaya is leading edge technology and it's just great to have that all happening here in Norfolk. The Avaya and the Type 72 definitely share a philosophy in their design. They're both inspired by aerodynamic performance, aerodynamic efficiency. The Type 72 has this very distinctive, iconic wedge shape, which was facilitated by putting the radiators at the side of the car rather than the front. And in many ways, the Avaya is very similar. Similar philosophy, but the execution is obviously totally different. So the Avaya is about porosity, allowing the air to go through the vehicle. It's a totally different era, and it's a different genre of vehicle. But they share that same philosophy about form working with function. Well, the first impressions are, I feel like I'm in a spaceship. You think of an EV as being completely silent, but from here it's not, it's amazing though. And the torque, wow. Just puts a big smile on your face. People always say with EV cars, oh, they're boring. This one's not. <laughs> this car isn't, it's not all about how quick we get from not to 60. I mean, it's very quick, but it's more, it's about the whole package. So it's about the power and it's from, not, to, not from not to 60, it's more from 60 to 200 miles an hour. Um, but again, it's not about the numbers with the Abaya. And that's what's great about Lotus. Numbers don't really mean much if you don't have the handling and the full package that goes with those numbers. Yeah, they've, uh, they've built a bit of a weapon. <laughs> Good job, guys. When Emerson was uh, unveiling the car, he talked about when Colin Chapman first introduced him to aerodynamics under the car. Now, Avaya is built on that. You know, the whole of the bottom of the car is an aerodynamic pull down onto the track. And that gives us the performance, because if you're going to have that power, you need a car that's controllable and still, you know, you can drive and still feel it. And it's the things that Colin Chapman was doing 50 years ago are still going into the road cars today. And that philosophy, that DNA runs through everything we're doing at Lotus. And it's really important to us to keep that legacy going. For the Avaya to be at Hethel now um, and to be running along with the 72s at, at this special event, it was just fabulous to think the greatest car in the world is a Lotus today, and it's driving around the test track with the greatest Formula One car. All those things coming together really emphasized how much Lotus today has its roots in Lotus of the past. This celebration is all about our future and our iconic racing past, um, working with, uh, with Emerson and, uh, and Clive Chapman. We're only building eight examples. Each of them has a number eight on the outside of the car. Um, and uh, that is also a link back to the car that Emerson raced in the 1972 season. So uh, he raced with three different numbers on his Formula One car in 1972. And one of those was number eight. He won the British Grand Prix with number eight on the car. Um, so the number eight has some real significance to this project. We've tried to make all of the touches that nod back to the Type 72 really subtle. We've actually recycled some original Type 72 aluminium and made every center rotary switch out of that material. 
and Clive Chapman had some really great ideas around the colour-coded centre-locking wheel nuts, colour-coded green and red, port and starboard. That was a Colin Chapman innovation, which we've taken into this as a, as a nod um, to, to what is still the most successful Formula One car chassis in history. As the youngest ever winner of motor racing's highest honour, Emerson Fittipaldi had plenty to celebrate. It's always very special, and being here at the Lotus Factory today, after so many years, driving back again. Sound the engine, steering wheel, the changing gears, fantastic feeling, fantastic. Okay. Incredible day, very special day for me. After Fernando? Very impressive car. I mean, as more you drive, you have to go faster because it gives so much handling feeling and there's a beautiful handling, incredible power. I'm sure everybody will be surprised. Everybody come out with big smiles from that car, for sure. It's, it's the next level of performance for the hypercar. I test many electrical hypercar. This is the next level, for sure. Different from all the other cars I test. I think the, the image, the recognition of the history is there, but the vibe is on a different level. Lotus has had many, many historic days, but you know, today is just magical. And I think, I think you can see it. Everybody's happy. Lotus is going places, and I think, uh, I think the Vire is a statement of that. Somebody just said to me, "You can see Emerson's gone back to being 25 when he was driving the driving the Type 72 around the track." And I, I think he's such a warm person. You know, he, he was so humble when we introduced him earlier. And I think that for me is just lovely. He feels part of Lotus. He said coming back here, it feels a bit like coming home. And that's what we're trying to do here. That's, that's my ethos is that we're all one family. Everybody that comes along here, you're all part of us lot as in the Lotus story. And I think everybody's going to go away from today with some memories that they won't ever forget. Day. Just have to thank God to be able to be here. A very unique day, very special day. I was very emotional with Chris because he organized everything, knowing that when he told him that Clive Chapman was there watching us, I can imagine his heart, my heart, everybody. What a sight to have the 872 running together here. And I saw chassis number one, York and first. First time he drove the 72 hours a year. You know, that's fantastic feeling to be able to be here. Thank you.